65 million years ago, the dinosaurs died out. We only know that they ever existed at all because of the tiny amount of their fossilized remains that have been found, and they endured for about 165 million years. We modern humans, on the other hand, have only existed for about 50,000 years, and it's only in the last few thousand of those that we have had an increasingly significant impact on the planet. So if tomorrow a similar type of extinction event were to wipe out the human race, and an archaeologist in the deep future from whatever species may have evolved by then was looking at the fossil record some 65 million years from now, what evidence would there be to show that we had ever existed at all? Although we like to think that we are the culmination of life on Earth and the only advanced species to have built civilizations, cities, spacecraft, and discovered much about how our world and the universe works, we don't actually know if a similarly intelligent species had existed before us. If it took us around 6 million years to go from our last common ancestor with the chimpanzees to sending men to the moon, then what's to say that a branch of the dinosaurs didn't do the same thing some 71 million years ago and before they became extinct? We assume that we are the first because we can't find any evidence to the contrary. We are a creative species. We have taken the natural resources and created a huge amount of stuff and changed the world in which we live. From plastic ducts to skyscrapers, massive structures like dams and the Great Wall of China to the radioactive fallout from nuclear tests. If we have created these, then surely a previous advanced civilization would have done something similar, and there should be some evidence to show for it. But the planet we live on is incredibly good at covering the tracks of the past. Just the wind, rain and ice can reduce massive mountain ranges to sand over millions of years. The land itself shifts, rises and falls. What was once at the bottom of the ocean is now found at the tops of mountains. Sea levels also rise and fall dramatically. The tectonic plates that make up the surface of the Earth, above and below the waves, are continuously moving, diving under one another and scrubbing clean any trace of what came before. So it's a bit of a miracle that we can find any large remains of dinosaurs or any other creatures come to that, considering what they have been through. But what we have to remember is they existed for over 165 million years, 3,300 times longer than modern humans have been around. And the number of creatures that lived in that time frame alone, not including the very small insect-sized ones, must be in the trillions. However, only a tiny number of those would have been in the right conditions to be quickly covered in sediment and then fossilized. Then, millions of years later, they happened to be exposed on the surface at just the right time before they were eroded for us to find them. The latest estimate is that the total number of modern humans to have ever existed over the 50,000 years we have been around is about 107 billion. But 50,000 years is a very small slice of geological time, and all of our 5,000 years of recorded history would be a fraction of that, and the last 200 years or so since the Industrial Revolution, when we made the most impact, would be a tiny fraction of that again. Maybe a razor-thin sliver of a darkened layer somewhere in the dozens of kilometers of limestone, siltstone, and shale of the future Earth's crust. Depending on where we look, there are gaps covering millions of years in the fossil records. If we were to slip into one of those, we too would be lost in time. So what about all the things we will leave behind? The cities with all the buildings, roads, skyscrapers, underground mines, hardened, secure bunkers, vast man-made concrete structures like dams. Over 65 million years, none of these would survive the effects of erosion or the coming ice ages 
and their crushing multi-kilometre thick ice sheets and glaciers scrubbing the land below clean. Any great city now would end up as a flat smudge in a layer of sedimentary rock by then. Plastics, the bane of our lives now, would break down over a thousand years or so. Most metals corrode away in a few hundred years or less. Just look at the wreck of the Titanic. 46,000 tonnes of steel and iron, 3,700 metres deep in the Atlantic. Probably one of the best places to be on Earth to be preserved, and yet it will have been consumed by iron-eating bacteria within a few hundred years. Only objects made from gold, silver and platinum on board would survive intact for long enough if they were protected from erosion. Even the radioactive fallout from the atomic tests in the 50s and 60s would have all but disappeared. The longest lived isotopes of these, iodine-129, has a half-life of 15.7 million years, so in 65 million years it will be pretty much gone. The objects on the moon that we have left behind, should anyone in the future be able to get there, would not be spared either. They would be hidden under a gradual accumulation of lunar dust and the weathering effects from the harsh solar radiation and the micrometeorites. The same would happen to the rovers on Mars too, only in a similar way to here on Earth. Even the ecological mess and climate change that we are creating would be undone in time. The Earth has been through much bigger changes and has survived. The biggest as far as life is concerned was the Permian-Triassic extinction event about 252 million years ago, where 96% of all marine life and 70% of all land-braced vertebrates became extinct, and the CO2 levels were seven times what they are now. The recovery took between two and 10 million years and saw the dinosaurs become the dominant species afterwards. Some of the smaller items which we have made from glass and some ceramics which are effectively man-made rocks, could survive if they were protected from erosion. But it will be the unseen effects which will be the biggest giveaway that our technological civilization ever existed, though you would need a mass spectrometer to find them. This would be the huge spike in the amount of carbon over the last 200 years, and the biggest disruption to the nitrogen cycle for two and a half billion years due to the use of artificial fertilizers and wastewater runoff. Other things would be noticeable by their absence, namely the variety of other species. The current extinction rate is up to a thousand times higher than it would be without us around. But other than this, in 65 million years, there will be almost nothing left on Earth to show for our civilization, our accumulated knowledge, our thoughts, ideas, art and culture other than a few fossilized bones, some gold and silver jewelry artifacts, and maybe some human footprints beside a long dried up riverbed, if you are lucky to find them at all. No one would have any idea of what we were really like, just like we would have no idea what a previous advanced civilization might have been like. The irony is that the more ecologically and in harmony we live with nature now, the less of an impact we will have on the Earth for anyone to find in the future. Equally, if there was any previous technological Earth-based civilization that had come to the same conclusion, then the less likely we are to find any trace of them. However, we will have left behind a handful of objects that will be in pristine condition and would tell any future Earthlings a great deal about us, even down to what we look like and sound like if they could find them because they aren't on Earth. They will be traveling in space, and in 65 million years, they will be about 35 quadrillion kilometers away, or about 3,740 light years. The space probes Voyagers 1 and 2, Pioneers 10 and 11, and New Horizons, far from the sun or probably any other star for that matter, will most likely outlast the Earth and the sun, destined to wander the depths of space until they either crash into something or are picked up by another intelligent species, or maybe even our space-faring descendants, if we make it that far. Who knows? 
they may be some 3,700 or so light years behind the last lot of satellites launched from Earth. So thanks for watching and don't forget to check out some of our other videos if you get the time and please subscribe, thumbs up and share.